What's going on guys? Today's video, we're going to find out who's better, a team of the oldest players in the NHL or a team of the youngest. Look at the oldest team here. We got the New York Boomers. I feel like it's just a bunch of old rich dudes in New York. Top players there, Crosby, Ovechkin, Malkin. Obviously, they're called Team Boomer. And now looking at the youngest team, we got the LA Zoomers. I feel like you have all the influencers and stuff living in LA. Their top players there, Bedard, McTavish, and Powers. Now for this video, I'm actually going to control the young team. You can only control one in franchise. Have to do a franchise mode. That way you can actually add these two teams without subbing anybody out. And I feel like the old team... You know, they're not going to have much, you know, rating change during the season, where the young team might. And our next show should the range for both these teams. LA Zoomers here, 86 overall, of course, being in LA. They're going to be in the Pacific Division. Moving on to the East, you got the New York Boomers there because they're New York. They're in the Metro. They're 89 overall. So a few overall higher, but again, uh, the young team's got a lot of potential. All right, so next show showed each team's lines are looking like. Again, the Zoomer team is the 20 youngest players in the NHL who have played at least 30 games. I wanted to, like, add that kind of requirement that way. You know, you didn't have any fringe players. Now, the Zoomer team here, you can see, you're looking kind of nasty. You got Leo Carlson first slam, Connor Bedard, Wyatt Johnston, uh, Fantilli, Beniers, McTavish on the second. You got Gunther and Cooley reunited with Sapkowski on the third. You got Benson, Patra, Sillinger on the fourth. Maybe Tate McCray will come out to some of these games. Defensively here, you got Owen Power, Jerichek on the top pair. Nemetz and Hughes reunited on the second pair. And then you got Mintikov, Korchinski on the bottom. I should mention, I think Owen Power and Matty Beniers, the two oldest players on this team, uh, they both have late birthdays in 2002. Needed a couple extra guys. There are younger players who have played, you know, 15 games or something. Maybe like a Brant Clark instead of Owen Power. But again, the 30-game requirement, I think, actually makes it a lot more realistic. Goaltending-wise, you got Hofer there starting. Or actually, he's probably going to be splitting games with Dostal. We've also got Devin Levi scratched. But he's only played like 20 games this year for the Sabres. Which is kind of surprised. So... He's there, but we're actually going to go with the two slightly higher rated ones. I think almost every player on this team has elite potential as well. Bedard, of course, has high franchise. But yeah, going through here, it's mostly elites. If not, it's like, you know, high top six. I think Potra and Slinger are the lowest there at medium top six. Then you look at the defense, I think every single one of them is medium elite. So like I was saying, this team is definitely going to grow a ton. Also, too, to kind of keep it fair, since we don't have control of the Boomer team's lines, I'm just leaving the power play kind of as they've been suggested. So you guys can see power play one, power play two. PK, I haven't really messed with it, so just going with what the, uh, you know, assistant coach decided. And next, you guys, they look at the Boomer team, so they're looking kind of nasty as well. You got Ovi, Crosby, and Pavelski on the first line. Second line here, you got Claude Giroux playing with Malkin and Kopitar, and I thought it was kind of funny, both Kopitar and Giroux have the quick try X factor, which of course, you know, is for making your face-offs better, but they decided to go with Malkin there in the middle. Third line, you can see definitely like a drop-off in talent. You got Felino, Carter, Perry, Clutterbuck, Parise, Cogliano on the fourth line, so... I think the Zoomer team definitely more balanced where the Boomer team, you got the high-end talent and like the Ovis and the Crosby, so then you can see the bottom six there is looking pretty rough and obviously they're not getting any better like the young guys are. Defensively though, they're actually pretty even. You got Suter Latang top pair, Burns, Jordan on the second with Vlasic, Johnson on the bottom. Goaltending wise, they do have the best goalie of the two teams in Marc-Andre Fleury, 84 overall. Jonathan Quick back him up, 82 is also better than both the young goalies, but again, these guys aren't going to be growing throughout the season like the young team will, so... Even though they start a little bit higher rated, it should even out. Now, I'm just going to sim until their first matchup. We'll actually, you know, watch these teams play. But before I get started here, guys, with the sim, let me know in the comment section which of these two things you think is going to do better. Is it going to be the oldest team or the youngest team? I'm curious to hear what you guys think. And check this out, guys. The two teams actually play each other early on. We're still in October. Zoomer team there, 4-2-1. and one. The Boomer team is 3-3. Three and three. Because they're in different conferences, they're only going to play each other twice throughout the entire year. Obviously, we got the home and home. So the first game here is in New York in the uh, Boomer home arena. So what I'm thinking is I'll send the first two periods and we'll watch the entire third period, see how they play against each other. Wow, first period, Boomer team popped off. You got Giroux, Obi, Carter, Perry all scoring, but Dart and McTavish there for the Zoomers. They're getting outshot. 7-5, all of a sudden, the young guys making it close. What a game between these two teams. Pacha, Bedard, Gunther, then you got uh, Sid, Felino, Malkin there. So like I said, we'll enter the simulation now, watch the third period. You guys can see the jerseys here, as well as the ratings. So for the Zoomer team, we're trying to do, you know, something crazy, something bright. So with a light blue, pink, and yellow color scheme, obviously too, like the logo, we got the Z. So you got Bedard there rocking the C's, the youngest player actually on this team. And I think Benson and Carlson are the next two youngest players, so I got both of them wearing A's. But right there, you guys can see the home jersey, the away, and the alternate. So the alternate decided to go with like the all pink as well as the pink chrome helmet and gloves. And I feel like for this game, why not just, you know, wear the alternate jersey, have some fun. And now for the Boomer team, we have some like old colors. So you got the brown, the beige, even the logo, we got it on like a Roman shield because Roman Empire was what, 2,000 years ago. So right there's the home, the away, and the alternate doesn't even have a logo, like very old school look, the brown gloves. I'll try alternates for both teams. They got Sid right in the seat for that team, which makes sense. So uh, curious to see what happens. Zoomer team's got 92 offense, 84 defense, 80 goaltending. Boomers here, same offense. Uh, probably we'll have a look at it here. I don't know why it like, doesn't let you sit on that screen, but same offensive rating, six better defense, five better goaltending. So very curious to see, like, you know, the Boomer team is better on paper, but 
the Luger team is going to keep getting better throughout the year. So look at this guy, just like the thumbnail, you got Bedard versus Crosby at the faceoff circle. Zoomer team down by two, start the third period, but we'll see what they can do here. Wyatt Johnson obviously been great for Dallas this year on the top line with Bedard. Now you got Bedard back on the puck now, skating up the ice, tries to make a move, but doesn't happen. I feel like if it was realistic, the Zoomer team definitely would be trying to punt a ton more deep throughout the game, going for Michigan, things like that, where you know, the Boomer team would just be doing dump and chase, getting bucks deep, simple hockey. All right, guys, you got Gunther on it here. Ring number two, I'm guessing somebody had his number. I forgot to check that. Cooley, pass it to Arizona teammate. Hughes gets denied. Gunther, nice shot, no rebound. And right there, you had Brent Burns laying out Dylan Gunther. And I totally forgot to mention, guys, that Mark Giordano is currently the oldest player in the NHL. So, of course, uh, the oldest player on the Boomer team. Haven't really seen him do too much. Crosby on it here, though. Let's look at the two-goal lead. Uh, really, neither team's had too great of a chance. Terrible pass from Jared Check. Luckily, Ovi there in the slot. Uh, shot does get blocked. Big hit on him, too. Wyatt Johnson here, minute left. Zoomer team should be pulling the goalie. And they have a chance, but Dart gets denied by a flurry there. So, looking like the Boomer team's going to get the uh, best of them in the first game. But, obviously, uh, we'll have a second game back in LA. Again, I think the contrast between these two jerseys is so funny. As I say that, Ovi picking up the rebound out front. Doing the hot stick selly. On just kind of a garbage rebound goal. I feel like you're fighting after that. And somehow Corey Perry was tied with like Ovechkin, Burns, and Malkin uh, for the team lead in points with eight, which is kind of nuts. Ten seconds to go. Johnson gets to the defenseman there, but not going to have enough time to do anything. So, like I said, guys, even though the Zoomer team has a slightly better record, the Boomer team coming away with the win in the first game. Now, the third star, this one's Bedard, two goals and an assist. Second star goes Ovechkin, same uh, stats, two goals, one assist. And the first star of that game was actually Brent Burns putting up four assists. Well done. All right, guys, we're now in February, and it's time for the second matchup. Right now, the two teams have almost identical records. The Boomers are 27, 22, and 4. The Zoomers are 26, 22, and 4. Like, that's so insane to me. The Zoomers are currently third place in the Pacific there, but it's very close. The Boomers are, I don't see them at all. That's because they're in the Metro, and they're actually sixth place in the Metro. They're six points back of a wild card spot. They might not make it just because they're in a tougher division. So, they really need this win here. Connor Bedard currently in score for the Zoomer team, just over a point per game. We're going to simulate the first two periods again then we'll watch the third and see what happens so the first period here one nothing early bedard on the power play they actually had jonathan quick starting this one no respect there for the young kids second period <laughs> crosby gets two Giroux gets one so i guess that's why no respect so i will jump in now looked like the boomer team was actually doubling the zoomer team shot we'll just rock the regular home jersey there with the boomer away there you guys might have noticed too bedard's now 88 overall he's also added an x factor i did switch up the lines a little bit to try to get things going for the zoomer team i think move benson up to the third line so Koski's down to the fourth i know canadian fans are gonna hate that but i'm just trying to mix it up i feel like the bomb six could have played a bit better although it's tough with like the team we have no real role players that kind of fit that spot so Zoomer team again is down two to start the third. Let's see if they can actually come back in this one. I accidentally uh, took control. Let me make sure I'm the coach. It's like I was saying, accidentally took control there. Didn't mean to do that. I want to see if they can, you know, come back on their own. Not with me taking control. So, Bedard there in the corner. Up to Carlson. Nice little pass. He's looking for somebody. Someone's got to drive the net. Bedard to Johnston. What a save by... Okay, yeah, what a save by Quick for a second. Thought he might have got the rebound. And it just showed Conor Bedard's fifth in the league in goals, I think. So pretty impressive for the 18-year-old. Take the draw again versus Crosby. Again, I love that pick I had for the thumbnail. Uh, him and Crosby. I believe that was the first game of the NHL season. I think that'll be an iconic one for years to come. Of course, there are a few Pittsburgh Penguins on this team. Crosby, Letang, Malkin, even Fleury, a former Penguin. I feel like that maybe you know, one of the reasons why they didn't do too great this year. A lot of older players. Pavelski to Crosby. And nice save by Hofer. We're about half through the third period now, guys. Malkin back on it. Let's see if he can do anything. He just dumps it when he was already kind of in the zone. So very strange decision. And ooh, nice interception by Power. Gives it to Beniers there. Michigan teammate. Obviously, we got Luke Hughes on it here. Kent Johnson almost made the team. Uh, he would have been like the 13th youngest forward. So it was super close. But unfortunately, he just missed. Carter here all alone. Nice poke from Hofer. All right, guys. So the Zoomer team on the power play. <laughs> And the Boomer team gets a shorty there with Crosby. He's actually a hat trick. Are you kidding me? Sid just has to show them, like, he's still the best in the biz. Wow. The little backhand there from the slot. Low blocker for the hat trick. I mean, you got you to gotta respect the man. Sid the kid, uh, I don't know. He's just showing them what's up. So Zoomer team still on the power play here. That's pretty funny, honestly. And uh, Giordano, oldest player in the NHL, is coming into the zone. What is Zoomer team... 
that puck almost went behind Hofer. That was almost too short. He's on the same power play. They still got Sid out there. He's looking for four. Trying to uh, replicate Austin Matthews. Giordano there. Went for the shot. And the Zoomer team's now on the PK. Kind of blowing this one. Crosby there with another shot on net. Up to Johnston. About a minute and a half left. They got the empty net down three. Respect. Love to see. Imagine like one of the Zoomer players just pulled up a Michigan. That'd be so sick. Um, what, what a redirect. I don't know where the power came from. Also, I just saw, I, I never made the mascot. It's just some random red cowboy, apparently. So got 10 seconds left here, guys. Zoomer's trying to do something, but again, just, you know, can't come back. The Boomer team just really bringing it to them. Boomers take the uh, two-game series there. I was wondering if I was going to have to add up some aggregate scores, but it ended up not mattering at all. And so the third star of this game, guys, is actually Jonathan Quick. One goal against, 20 saves. Second star here, Joel Velsky with two assists. And then obviously the first star got to be Sidney Crosby there with the hat trick. All right, guys, so I just finished things for the season. Zoomer team there finished a record of 41, 33, and 8, which was good for a playoff spot. Third place in the Pacific Division with 90 points. And luckily, the Boomer team is also in the playoffs. They finished there with a record of 44, 33, and 5, and 93 points. So uh, the Boomer team actually finished with more points, and I think they both finished third. Or no, Boomer team is a wild card. So there is a chance they could meet up in the Stanley Cup final. Would be really cool. I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. Connor Bedard at 80 points and 50 goals. Hitting the 50 goal mark in your rookie season is pretty incredible. Dard's now 91 overall as well, so I definitely lean the way for this squad. I feel like Carlson's high elite. He's actually gone up by one only. Johnson there's gone up by one as well. Veneer, 62. Fantilli, he's gone up by a couple. You got Cooley there's the last guy, 50 plus. Owen Power, 35. Lean way for defensemen, but yeah, overall, like I think this young team played pretty well considering like the ratings they started out at. Goal tiny looks like Hofer got a little bit more starts. Save percentage though was a little bit worse. Also his goals again, so. I wonder how they, you know, decide that. And look at the Boomer team now, guys. Flurry, of course, going to be getting more starts. He had a much better save percentage than Quick, who had below 900. Goals against there, below 3. So you got Sid leading the way, 86 points. Kind of like the opposite to Bedard, 36 goals and 50 assists. You got Ovechkin behind him, he had 39 goals there for 80 points. Pavelski at 76, Malkin at 71, Giroux, Kopitar all 60-plus. Burns put up 54. Look at the entire league. Kucherov, 116. I don't think any of the players from any of these teams are going to be at the top of this list, at least... The players that are actually on our teams, like you can see Ovechkin on the Capitals there, did have 100 points. Be on the first page of scoring. Kucherov, though, gets the range of shard there with 60. Defensive scoring, it's Kale McCarr with 93. And Brent Burns on the Hurricanes put up 80. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, I don't know why. Maybe just because our teams had more depth. Uh, they didn't perform as well. Goal tank wise to Sturkin, most wins. Corpy Salo of all goalies with the best save percentage. No offense to him, just would not have expected that. It looks like Allmark, lowest goals against. Rookie skaters, we had obviously a team of almost all rookies. And it is actually Archon Bedard there, 80 points. But Chicago Bedard had a better plus minus, so he'll probably win it, even though he had two less points. And, like, our Bedard had 50 goals. If he doesn't win it, I think that'd be a bit of a joke. 50 goals your rookie season. Probably should be a shoe-in for the Calder. But I'll take a quick look here, guys, at the entire league. So Maple Leafs and the Avs tied for the President's Trophy. I'm not... Has the uh, Maple Leafs winning, actually, yet? Yeah, because they had four more regulation overtime wins, even though they actually had one less win in total. Um, so we'll take a look. The Boomer team's going to be first. They got 13th in the entire NHL, 93 points. And then the Zoomer team here, oh my, they got lucky there in the West, 90 points. Three Eastern teams were better. So uh, you actually had LA Kings, both LA teams, squeaking in there. And then last place in the NHL, it's going to be San Jose Sharks, which, you know, pretty true real life, with 63 points. So we'll start the playoffs soon now, guys. We'll try and, you know, keep track of how the Boomer team's doing. Like I said, it would be perfect if these teams can meet in the Stanley Cup final, but obviously probably not going to happen. We actually... Yeah, the Zoomer team's got the Oilers round one, so <laughs> I'm not going to be holding out too much hope. First two games here in Edmonton. Four, we actually win both. We would not expect that. We win both games, head home to LA now. We get a loss, an OT loss, so somehow playing better in Edmonton than we are at home. Go back to Edmonton, 7-4 win. Maybe the young guys just have too many distractions in LA. Game six at home, we lose it. We got game seven here, do or die. And 0-0 after one, after two. After three, two to one, Ryan McDavid there with the game winner. But Dart scored the minute left, unfortunately, too little, too late. So I'll keep track of the Boomer team, see how they did. Obviously, Zoomer team there out in seven round one. The Boomer team actually beat the Hurricanes in round one, and they were the wild card. So pretty impressive. And look at this, guys. The Boomer team is now in the conference final against the Bruins. They're down one early, but they're making a run. But unfortunately, guys, the Bruins beat them in the conference final and actually went on to win the Stanley Cup. So Pretty cool still to see both teams make the playoffs. The Boomer team obviously end up being the better of the two, making it to the conference final and doing better in regular season. I personally would have thought the Zoomer team might be better just because the Boomers lack that depth. But again, they have those role players. Even though they're lower rated, they're kind of filling out the third and fourth line better. Philly there jumps up from two to one. 
to get the rights to draft a Mac and Celebrini's. And I'll look at the playoff tree here so you can see Boston beat the Panthers in the first round in six, Leafs in six in the second. They swept the Boomer team in the conference final. That's kind of tough. And then they actually swept the Winnipeg Jets in the Stanley Cup final. That is nuts. Didn't lose a single game in what should have been like the two hardest matchups of the playoffs for them. So uh, the Bruins there just dominant. Taking a look at the individual awards now. Kucherov, Art Ross. McKinnon, though, gets the heart. Good chance to win that in real life this year. McCarr, James Norris. Braden Point, Lady Bing. And look at this. Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks got the Calder. All because he had a better plus minus. That is an absolute joke when Art Bedard had 50 goals. Like, come on. Brad Marchand, Conn Smythe. Jari there got the Vesna. Swayman and Allmark shared the William Jennings. That's actually back-to-back -back years for them. Lozon, Bill Masterton. Predators coach, Jack Adams. Cross, we got the Selkie on the Penguins, though. McKinnon, Ted Lindsay, then finally Kucherov there with the Reese Richard. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. I had a lot of fun doing it. I've got some ideas, too, for some other, like, you know, who's better videos we can do in the future. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.